Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, let's try to understand how can an open source project set up continuous integration and continuous delivery that is CICD for absolutely zero cost. Now, why does an open source project need a strong CICD system? Unlike your regular projects, of course, your regular projects, that is your organizational projects, also need a strong CICD system. But specifically, when you talk about open source projects, there are contributions that come from various places. There are first time contributors, there are experienced contributors. So you need a strong CICD system. For example, a person called Abhishek contributes to the repository for the first time. You don't know the person and you're not sure about the changes that this person is making. You might have a peer on the open source project or a reviewer on the open source project who is reviewing the changes, but still you need a strong automated system which picks up the changes, the files that are changed by Abhishek, builds the project along with the file changes of Abhishek, unit tests the changes, deploys the application onto a Kubernetes cluster, runs the end-to-end -end test, regression test, or function test on the new application that is deployed onto the Kubernetes cluster. And you might also need some code scanning so that you are aware the code adheres to the security standards. So a strong CI-CD system is definitely required. But the challenge here is how can an open source project, which are mostly community driven projects, manage the infrastructure that is required to set up these Kubernetes clusters. The infrastructure does not come for free and open source projects are community driven. Of course, I'm not talking about the most popular open source projects. You have projects like Kubernetes, which are very well funded. There are cloud providers like Google who are backing up the Kubernetes or other popular open source projects where they get some free credits from these cloud providers so they can set up their Kubernetes clusters on every pull request or they might have some Kubernetes clusters that are already created and when you have a pull request, the application is deployed onto those Kubernetes clusters and well tested. But imagine if I want to start an open source project today or there is a community driven open source project which are not backed up by these cloud providers and not very well funded. So how can they deploy their applications or Kubernetes operators onto Kubernetes clusters because they come with certain cost. In this video, I will be explaining how the open source projects set up infrastructure CICD for absolutely zero cost. First of all, you need to understand that most of the open source projects, almost like 90% of the open source projects are hosted on GitHub. So GitHub provides free runners to the open source public projects. Of course, if it has to be open source, it has to be a public repository. So at this point of time, GitHub provides free runners or free agents, free virtual machines, whatever you would like to call for the open source projects and what these open source projects do. I'll also show you an example. Don't worry. Towards the end, I will pick up a project. So GitHub provides free runners and what the maintainers or people who are contributing to the open source project do is they set up a CI CD system using GitHub actions. So the GitHub actions creates a Kubernetes cluster on that free runner. Now the interesting part here is the free runner is a virtual machine that is not too big. It's a virtual machine with limited capacity. So open source projects makes use of 
Kubernetes distributions like K3S, where K3S is a very lightweight Kubernetes uh, cluster. It has very less footprint in terms of memory and also the uh, disk space. So the K3S clusters are created and within this K3S clusters, the applications, which are the open source projects are deployed and using that GitHub actions, you can also execute your end to end tests or regression functional tests against the application deployed on the K3S cluster. Now you might ask me, but Abhishek, imagine there is a requirement that you don't want to just test on a single Kubernetes cluster, but you want to test the core changes against a, uh, you know, a highly available Kubernetes cluster setup, or you might want to uh, test the core changes against uh, three to five Kubernetes clusters on the same PR. Another thing that you can do is you can make use of kind, which is Kubernetes in Docker or K3D. So these are two popular projects which run Kubernetes inside containers and using K3D or kind the CICD system that is within the GitHub actions. You can create a multi node Kubernetes cluster or within a single virtual machine that is the GitHub actions runner. You can set up multiple Kubernetes clusters as well. So this is how open source projects on every single pull request. They make use of the GitHub actions and on the GitHub runner, the CICD system that is GitHub action creates a K3. Of course, you have to write that when I say creates one of the contributor has to write this entire CICD. It can be a person within that open source project who is aware of DevOps or a developer who knows how to build the CICD system. Whoever it is, they make use of GitHub actions and they build the CICD system where Kubernetes clusters are created using K3S, K3D, Kind. These are some of the popular choices. So this is the official Prometheus operator GitHub repository. It's a Kubernetes operator that allows users to deploy Prometheus and manage the configuration of Prometheus through a custom resource definition. There are like 580 to 600 contributors to this repository and there can be any new contributors as well. So there are fair number of pull requests that this repository gets. Let's see how this repository is managing continuous integration and continuous delivery with absolute zero cost. So if you go to the dot GitHub folder, like I told mostly people use GitHub actions when it comes to open source and Go to the workflows directory where the CICD files are written. Individually, each of them is a complete different pipeline. They are not stages. If you go to end to end.yaml, this is the one which is basically deploying the application along with the code changes, building it and deploying onto a Kubernetes cluster and running some end to end tests. So to do that, there should be a Kubernetes cluster. Let's see how the project is creating a Kubernetes cluster. Now this pipeline would run on a GitHub runner. It is only triggered when there is a pull request and the pull request is on the code files. That is the Golang files, but not on the MD files because there is no point of running the end to end CICD pipeline along with the end to end test. If the change is in the documentation complete documentation. Then it also triggers an end to end test CICD uh, pipeline when the changes are committed to the release branch, master branch or the main branch. And there are some tags as well, where if there is a change or a tag is created on that particular tag, the end to end tests are executed. So the job name is end to end tests. What it is doing if you ignore the uh, strategy part. If we start with the steps, so initially it is using the checkout, which will uh, check out the source code, then install go. Where is it installing go? It is installing go 
on the GitHub agent or the GitHub runner. Then it sets some uh, environment variables. It creates the kind cluster. This is what I was talking about. Some people use the K3S cluster. Some three, some people use K3D and some open source projects use kind cluster. In this case, the project is using kind, which is Kubernetes inside Docker or Kubernetes in Docker. So kind has very less footprint because a Kubernetes cluster is created inside a container. So you can imagine what is the size of that particular Kubernetes cluster and it can run on a virtual machine as well. So the version of kind and how much time uh, the runner has to wait for the creation of the Kubernetes cluster and what is the end to end test or the kind configuration file. This is a kind configuration file which defines how many number of nodes, how many number of control plane nodes, how many number of worker, worker nodes, etc. Wait for the cluster to finish bootstrapping. So here the project or the CACD is evaluating if the cluster is up and running. Then there are some uh, Docker images which are uh, loaded to the Kubernetes cluster. And this is where the end to end tests are getting executed. So this runs the end to end test on the Kubernetes cluster, which in our case is a kind Kubernetes cluster. So this is how open source projects set up the CI CD process with absolutely zero cost. And if you also are maintaining a public GitHub repository or in future, you have an aspiration to start an open source project, contribute to open source. You can also set up this kind of process for any open source repositories. You, this can be your contribution as well.